Welcome back to Weld.com. I'm Mike Beecher, aka Man Cub. Uh, we're going to be talking about undercut on the root and undercut on the cap. Today we're going to be welding on uh, 2G carbon steel pipe schedule 80 with TIG. I already ran the first pass, already the root. Uh, I'm going to show you the undercut we have. The reasons you get undercut is misaligning pipe. Second is uh, running too high of an amperage. And uh, third actually is not adding enough filler wire. So let's go look at the undercut on the inside of the pipe and I'll show you how to repair it. All right, so the undercut is about right here. Uh, the reason I know that is I looked inside the pipe and I kind of eyeballed how far it's back. So since I stopped here, I'm going to just mark this and I'm going to grind all the way back to here. All right, I'm going to basically cl clean it up and try to make it look like this bevel again, best as I can. And uh, you can either do it a couple ways, grind until your metal turns blue. So the, on the blowing part of the metal, it tells me it's thin, it's getting really hot. So. You, that's when I know I, I grinded it enough because I know I'm going to penetrate right through that thin metal and I'll have a good uh, tie-in on my toes. So that's the blowing of the metal I'm talking about. Or take it all the way out and make sure you don't go wide enough, wider than this uh, gap right here. So let's go ahead and repair this. All right, guys, before we get into grinding, there's a couple methods that you could go ahead and tackle this problem with different wheels. Uh, today I'm using the Weiler Pipeliner. The reason I like this because it's thin. Uh, you can grind, on, grind with 0 to 45 degrees, basically go like that, or come up a little bit more, or you can notch with it. You come in there and just notch, and that's my favorite part with this wheel, and you're notching. And also, you're not wide. If you're really wide, you could basically eat your bevel away right here, and basically, it's harder to fix your problem. Some people take it all the way through and get rid of it. I usually uh, just take it until it gets thin, or if I mess up, I just do what Got to do what, it's, uh, what the grinder does. Like if I mess up and it goes through, it's not a big deal, but this is the way I, I do it. Then I just basically reshape this best as I can and basically grind a little bit back so I can have a good tie-in when, when I start off. You see that bluing right there? That tells me the, the metal's really thin there. That's like the first sign. It's getting thin, it's getting thin. So you kind of want to back off. When it gets cherry red, get the heck off of it. Don't come around it. I'm gonna grind a little bit more right here and grind a little bit more right here and uh, I'm gonna feather this out a little bit so I, have, so I can have a good tie-in. So let's go ahead and finish this out and also I'm gonna kind of shape this so when I'm filling up my inner passes, I mean when I'm filling up the pipe, I wanna have a good um, smooth uh, transition right here for walking the cup because I don't wanna bump over stuff or anything. It'll mess up my rhythm. Since I can see inside this pipe, you want to use this uh, to your advantage, looking inside. So I'm going to look inside, make sure it's pretty thin. It looks, it looks thin to me. I'm just verifying it, trying to reassure myself. So it looks thin. I even got more bluing right here. So I know when I'm, I start up and start moving, I know that metal is just going to uh, melt down real easy. And I'm just going to basically just keep on running like uh, the repair wasn't, like the undercut wasn't there. So when I was running my route, I set my machine to like uh, 97 amps there. I'm just going to go ahead, fire up, and just keep, them, keep the same amps going and just go all the way around and, and go all the way until the end, and that's it. Then we're going to just inspect it from the inside and run our hot pass. All right, before we go ahead and weld this, I'm going to show you guys a little dry run here so you guys can see it um, without welding it under the hood. So I'm basically going to strike my arc right here. Uh, move back, I mean move forward. I'm starting a quarter inch back guys too. And I come to this end, make sure it's completely melted before I take off. And I, I just start moving, then I add my filler wire and I'm basically just going like this. And watching my toes and just keep moving forward. And we're just going to weld that to the next tack. Starting a little back, warming up that tack here. And we're just going to move along here. This might blow open a little bit, but we're just going to, might have to dip it a little bit because my method is a little lay wire technique. All right, I'm going to pull it out since it exploded. I'm just going to kind of dip this in. I'm leaving my cup on the, uh, on the groove here, on the bevel, and I'm just going to kind of dip this in. So this is why you got to learn a couple different techniques. We're just going to feed, keep feeding it, make sure we're tired, tied in. And we're just going to walk it around to the next tack. 
We want to make sure you're kind of pausing on the sides for about a second. And then we're going to just go ahead and try, try to do your normal technique you do. And just resume it. Whatever amps you're running, whatever your technique is. All right. I just do a slight wibble. If you go too wide, you won't get penetration. All right. You want to make sure you're breaking these walls down, though. So everything's running smooth. I'm staying real tight. 2G, uh, you want to stay real tight. Keep your tungsten really tight to your puddle. A short stick out. Or short arc length, excuse me. And I'm just going to keep wiggling it. It's been a while, so I'm running a little slower than I used to do it. So we're coming up on this uh, tack right here that we put in for fit up. Kind of just come in here, warm up this whole area. Add filler wire here. I kind of move back a little bit. The torch backwards and re rerun that over again. So I'll get a good tie-in. All right, that's it. You guys can see this is a little wide. I mean, we had to do a repair there, but that's normal. Um, this is the way I'm doing it. Everyone's got a little different way. So we started back here, came over here, and just kind of kept watching our making sure we washed into our toes really good. And as you can see, our bevel got to normal, like we uh, beveled before on the pipe. I mean, as the pipe was prepped before, and it just continued going nice and straight and everything went smooth. And we just tied into the other tack on this other side of this pipe. So let's go look at the inside and I'll show you the repair on there. Here's a repair. You can see uh, it's a little wider, but hey, it's fine. We don't have no undercut. We repaired it and it's passable. The inspector will pass this. Um, you can see where we tied in good when we took off the previous weld and uh, it got a little wide, but it's, it's not bad because there's no undercut on the toes here on this root face. And we just kept running all the way around. I mean, it's flat, um, but it's passable. where everything's broke down and we run the next pass a little bit hotter and it'll push it out even more Then uh, everything's good. So that's how you repair uh, undercut on a root pass. So I just showed you how to repair a uh, root. So I'm gonna show you how to repair undercut on a cap. I filled up the pipe right here. So as you can see, I got a little bit of undercut right here on top. And I got a little bit of undercut on the bottom. You usually get a lot of undercut on the top because uh, gravity pulls your well puddle down. So I did this on purpose, ran high amps and I didn't pause on my side. So we ran really fast. So that's your normal case of undercut. So let's go ahead and repair that. So I was at 97 amps, so I'm gonna turn Turn it up to 140 amps. So you want to make sure your pipe basically cooled off. The way I check it is take my glove off and touch the pipe. You want to be careful though, but if it if I could touch it and it's lukewarm, I know I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and weld that, do that repair. Uh, the reason uh, it usually gets undercut is you're rushing your test and you're running way too hot and you're pulsing on the and you're not stopping on your sides and letting the puddle fill up them sides. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and repair that. Take a look at this. So I'm going to kind of get my pup puddle established the size I want, keep my filler wire up top, and I'm just going to kind of come up, pause for a second, let it wet in, pause there on the top, come down, slight hesitation. I'm going to add a little filler wire here because I want to let it wet in pretty good. I want to fill that undercut in. I'm pretty happy with down there. Come up, we'll add a little filler wire right here. See, it'll take the puddle when you move down, it'll take some of it down with you. I'm gonna make sure, I'm checking right here really good. And then I'm gonna pull away. I'm still gonna look down there for a second. Then I'm gonna just come here, and add some filler wire in here. And just come in here, pause a little bit, make sure it's good. And just slowly back up here. All right, and add filler wire. All right, every cap's gonna be a little different, so you'll have to learn from the, the way you weld. All right, all right, I'm gonna stop it there because it's just for a little repaired purpose. All right, guys, that's how you repair undercut. I hope this helps. Uh, you basically gotta find your way, your technique. I hope this will help you. This is my personal way to fix undercut on a cap. Remember, you're fixing a mistake just so you can pass the test, all right? Then you still get better just to keep practicing and keep practicing all right guys don't get discouraged so i hope everyone's staying safe and healthy uh, we're still keeping our distance uh, thanks for watching well.com i'm man cub 
Learning is key, guys. Learning is key. Hey, learning is key. That's very important. If you're not learning something new, you're being lazy and useless being in front of TV.